It is seriously one of the most exciting days we've had in about five weeks. Yes, we have got our hard drive back in our little mittens. <laughs> five weeks ago, I was editing this video you're just about to see. I was just about to hit export when our hard drive with all of our footage crashed. We almost lost everything. But five weeks and $2,000 later, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for your patience. I know it was terrible timing leaving you all without Tiller broken while we're at sea and then not posting anything for about five weeks, and we're really sorry if we concerned anyone. <laughs> This unexpected time off rattled us. We didn't know what to do if the footage didn't come back. We considered seriously resailing that part of the coastline, but then we're like, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be new to us. It wouldn't, it wasn't gonna, we were rattled. It has, however, just made us so much more excited to share the rest of our journey with you. So without further ado, let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. Where's Lynn and Sophie? Yeah. <laughs> it's good. We've set off on our 10 metre sailboat to circumnavigate Australia. This season sees us weaving through the Great Barrier Reef on our way to the tip of Australia, where we will take a sharp turn west, pushing ourselves over the top. We are officially underway and going and heading to the Northern Territory. One of the most remote areas on the planet. This is the scariest beautiful thing we've ever done. It's been an exciting ride so far in the peak of the trade wind season. We have quickly adjusted to sailing in conditions that have us breaking speed records daily. I think that's our land speed record, 10.2 knots. And our old poor mainsail is holding on for dear life. Our main really is hanging on by thread. It just needs to get us through this season. We've settled into life living off the islands, catching dinner from the ocean, followed by cookups with mates on open fires. This is like what all the swearing and all the boat jobs and everything is about. Despite persistent wind and rain, we've embraced its glory and the adventure is tracking well. However, in these relentless conditions, it was only a matter of time until our boat's hidden weaknesses were brought to light. Our tiller is really not looking great. While offshore and en route, our autopilot failed on us. Our autopilot's having a moment. This was no worries as we've done our fair share of hand steering. <laughs> However, not long after, an unnerving cracking noise alerted us to see our tiller had snapped. Rot hidden behind metal plating on our tiller had eaten through the wood, leaving our ability to hand steer Nakama through the narrow reef passages in the swell compromised. We just gotta take it as easy as we can. We managed to lash the steering with a fishing gaff and some spare rope, reducing sail and limping into the islands where we are now, marooned until we can repair the damage. More importantly, we made it here alive. And it's a great spot to be marooned while we do some repairs for a while. Like, I mean, look at it. The plan's developed a little bit. I'm gonna be wet hands, so it's gonna be dry hands. So on the other side of this island, there's this coral reef lagoon. Look at this! <laughs> Welcome to episode 10 of season two, Over the Top. Lizard Island is an island of dreams. Us yachties take advantage of this extremely protected bay where you can sit out a gale in trade wind season and are guaranteed a flat, well-rested night's sleep. And the next morning, you'll roll out of bed while the wind's still blowing and enjoy its calm, crystal clear water, white sand beach and fringing coral reef. It's not only us yachties that dream of Lizard Island. How amazing are those bait balls? <laughs> what? Coral reef researchers from around the globe flock in for the opportunity to be a part of the island's research station, where they conduct vital research to ensure the stability of the world's largest reef, the Great Barrier Reef. And on the opposite end to us grotty yachties, 
A-list celebrity's dream of an escape from the paparazzi. Staying at the exclusive Lizard Island Resort that offers rooms in a range of two to $28,000 a night. And of course, for Captain Cook, it provided a lookout point to fulfill his dream of escaping the reef that entangled and enclosed them to the coast. So it's not a bad place to be marooned. And in between repairs, we are super excited to check out all the amazing things this beautiful island has to offer. We are literally about 50 meters from the edge of the continental shelf. I'm looking down on fish here in about, oh, I don't know, six to eight meters water. And about 50 meters that way, it goes to about two and a half thousand meters. However, let's get our priorities straight. At the moment, we have a boat. But the problem is the steering is broken. While we may have sailed to safety with a fishing gaff lashed to our tiller, we need to come up with a longer lasting solution to get us through to Darwin. So that block that was mounted on the tiller, that's sort of where it has come undone for us. Someone's mounted that onto the tiller and obviously water's gotten into those screw holes and that whole section where that block was is just rotten wood, which is such a bummer. Although we were certain we had a spare tiller, after searching the boat to the core, it turns out we don't. I was 99% certain that we had a spare tiller aboard. I swear. I've seen a bit of wood resembling the shape of a tiller and where I thought it would have been, it's not. We know keyboard warriors, we are completely irresponsible. Anywho, out here we are quite a way away from any hardware store, so we got to work with what we've got. We have big plans today. We are going to try and fix the tiller. I think I had a bit of a dodgy plan last time which I might have explained. I was thinking of using the old spear gun on top, but Miles has an old broom. Miles isn't that fond of a cleaner, so we said we could have it. It's not aluminium, it looks like stainless. For the top, to get a straight line, and then I'm thinking I'm gonna take those jerry boards off and put one on each side and screw them on. And that'll be our new handle, because they'll be too thick to hold then, with that on there. You know what I mean? plan's developed a little bit and I think this will be the better option and I can always still use the original plan as a backup if this doesn't work. There's rotted wood. So basically we're just going to try and chip away at any wood that wants to come out and that's not doing any good being there. We're just going to try and clean it up as much as we can and get some good wood happening. And then we're going to fill, fill, not sicker, fill the f out of it with resin. That was a bad idea. <laughs> so the snap has gone right through down to this bottom layer of, I guess, wood lamination. Um, I do want to keep any of the good wood intact so the uh, resin has something to actually bind and stick together and I feel like having this like labyrinth in there could be wrong might help but this hole here now goes through to all the center I can see the screwdriver and I've cleaned that out I'm just gonna pour the resin straight in the top once I've sort of covered up the sides and hope that everything gets filled and then once that's sort of set we can go and do a glassing job over the actual break after hollowing this out now and getting all the rod out it pretty much is just like hollow <laughs> on the inside it's, it's so lucky that we heard that first snap because one more decent wave on this thing without it splintered we could have been in a lot more trouble than we were so we, we got off pretty lucky with this um let's hope we can get it fixed up so it can get us through to the next bit of civilization there's no way we're sailing south at the moment the wind just wouldn't allow it so it's sort of onwards and upwards and um yeah we're gonna get this in a condition that it'll safely get us where we need to be until we can, I guess, replace the whole thing. But um, I don't think that's going to be for a few months, to be, to be frank. So 
we have some resin aboard that has definitely exceeded its shelf life. Materials have a limited shelf life and therefore should be used within three months of purchase. Well, that was about three years ago. But we figure, just like the use by date on your Vegemite jar, you've got a couple years up your sleeve and she'll be right. <laughs> The resin with a bit of chopped up fiberglass filled the labyrinth of hollow wood nicely. Now we'll just have to wait and see if it's reacted correctly with the hardener for it to set. Well, the epoxy took ages to set, but it finally has. We're not going to fiberglass it now because it's really actually quite rainy. And there's spots of sunshine, but it's mostly squally, but it's our day off. It's our designated day that we designated as our day off because we've been studying for heaps and we've got some assessments to come so we're like we're having a day off and it's raining on the day that's our day off but we don't have a choice we've got to get into it anyway so we've both got a lecture free afternoon so we may as well put it to good use and stretch out our legs with a bit of a hike so on the other side of this island there's this like coral reef lagoon you can get into with your boat but the conditions aren't that great Oh, for getting in with the boat. So we're taking our own two legs over and gonna check it out. <laughs> Should we hijack a plane? <laughs> The sight of the blue lagoon, even with a grey sky, hit you in the face with its glorious, vibrant blues and white sand. You can just imagine how this would be in a glass off on a sunny day. However, we did make an unfortunate discovery. Being in the windward side of the island, the beach was scattered with ridiculous amounts of plastic. Something we haven't seen much of yet along Australia's coast. The high tide line rainbow with microplastics and wedged in rocks, an array of foreign drink and exotic shampoo bottles. Oh Anti-scurf orishing shampoo. What's scurf? <laughs> and in abundance, everyone's left thong. I think the right ones float to New Zealand. If you're lucky, you might just find yourself a pair in your size. Oh wow, that is your size. Oh, it is my size. Okay. It's pretty good. Pay a lot of money for these kind of boutique combs back in Byron. Comb over my bald spot. Besides plastic, we found all sorts of activities on this beach. What's up guys, and welcome to 24 hours on an island. And that was our time on the north side of Lizard Island. 
So the tiller has since we've it's held up really good so far. It's lost its bend. It feels pretty sturdy again, but uh, a little bit of our masking tape because I got a bit generous with my paw got buried in the resin. So we're gonna we're gonna sand it back neat anyway. And then once it's all sanded back and smooth, we're gonna glass over it, and then hopefully that's our tiller fix. Getting the measurements, babe? Yeah, this is how my math brain works. <laughs> it looks like me when I broke my ankle. <laughs> now I gotta figure out We don't have any measuring cups on board. We've got cup measures. It's not gonna happen now, I've already poured it. How many mils? Like, what's a hundredth of that? I'll just eyeball it, eh? Yeah, that was a hundredth. Last time we freaked out and started stirring like crazy, but set time on this isn't as Niles Barkley as what I, don't, I think the resin was when it was new, so it's gonna mix it up pretty casually, not freaking out. That's what happens when you've got ADD though, you do things really casually for a while and you think you've got plenty of time, you get distracted and that's where the trouble starts. Because you forget that you were mixing it. Like, I'll go pat chili for a little bit or something and be like, F the resin! But anyway, um, stirring along quite nicely. Are we ready? Yeah. We've decided to go for, I'm going to be wet hands, so it's going to be dry hands, if that makes sense. So if things don't get too messy, I'll get messy, Hope so I should hopefully stay dry and just articulate the stuff really well. Articulate, I don't know, no, let's do it. Let's get into it. We are feeling really positive about our tiller repair. With the resin filling the rotted space, she was sturdy once again. And we've reinforced it further with layers of fiberglass sheets. She wasn't going anywhere. But now that it's had a chance to dry, we figure there can't be too much resin. So we're mixing up one last batch to fill any air pockets and cover any prickly bits. She will be smooth like a baby's bottom and strong like a Spartan warrior. <laughs> Oh my god, that's the best one we've had. Mm. Look who it is. Just in time for a coconut. Just in time, but. Like the spit. Yeah, that's so good. That was a tight one. No, it's a good coconut. That's so right? good. That tastes good. Why don't you spice it fresh? Pour it into a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you literally have no idea how much it means to us to have played that for you. We were so <laughs> really, we don't have all, we've got most of our footage, there's a few weird little spots of stuff missing, but like we are... It's alright, it's alright. Yeah, we'll showing you that it's meant <laughs> a lot to us. We really hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Like, we had the most incredible trip to where we are right now, and it was just... It was devastating. But, Everyone was like, at least no one's dead. I'm like, yes, yeah. it's such a valid point. But to me, like that footage and what we do is such a massive part of who I am and what I'm passionate about. And I just felt like... A big part of travelling for us is, is capturing it. Like, I don't know, it's, it's for ourselves and you guys, but we, we enjoy the film making process. So we were feeling pretty heartbroken if we weren't to recover the footage. So we are just seriously so grateful that... 
Yeah, it's it's back in our hands. Oh. Seriously, if this is the wake up call you need, yeah, if you're a content creator, back, up your, back up your stuff. It's not worth it. It's a very expensive way to learn to back up your footage. Oh. Seriously, back it up. But um, anyway, if you've ever <laughs> considered being a patron, now is an epic time. <laughs> now is an epic time to become a patron because we we always appreciate you guys we really appreciate it. yeah we really appreciate um, your support and thank you to our patrons for making these videos possible yeah. and if you did enjoy the video make sure to subscribe and otherwise i hope you enjoy the rest of the trip like we're so excited to bring you yeah like, let's start off by next week next week yeah, i'm like we'll nervous to like <laughs> We'll, see, we'll maybe see you next week. We'll see you next week. Oh, we're changing, oh, we're changing oh. Saturdays. The other thing we want to tell you is that we're going to change our upload day for the time being. It might, um, we've just been looking at channel analytics and we can see that most of you are online throughout the weekends and Monday. Um, so obviously we want to get at the start of that time so we catch you all until the Monday. If yeah, that makes YouTube's sense. sort of telling us post now. Yeah, we're like, oh. So we're going to give that a crack, um, hopefully to reach some more of you and um, until yeah, then we'll see, we'll see you next week or in five weeks or who knows. Hopefully not five weeks. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you soon. Anyway, yeah. thanks guys. See you soon. <laughs>